Amen. Hallelujah. We are continuing our series on losing my religion. And this morning we want to talk about the movement. We want to talk about the movement this morning. We talked about the Bible last Sunday. We talked about on Wednesday night. We talked about the agenda. But I want to talk about the movement on today. I want to talk about the movement on today. We are six weeks um, that we've been out of the, out of the, the church, the, the physical church. We've been out of the church. It's been six weeks. Um, stating today, it's been marking today six weeks that we've been out of the church. And so things that all has already shifted and changed. If you haven't noticed, things have already shifted and changed. And I'm going to tell you this. Whenever we do assemble again, as I have been stating over the past couple of weeks, we will never go back to what we were and what, what we was a part of. We're going to be a part of something new and something fresh. And I believe that God is in a season where he is revitalizing the church. You're revitalizing the way we see church and we think about church. And if you've been in the six weeks of quarantine, as I have, and not sought God, God out to really discover that the church is you and not the building, then something is wrong and you're missing it. And I'm telling you, if you don't open your mind, and open the eyes of your mind, you will miss what God is saying in the next season because you're going to get left behind. And that's what happened with the first generation of Israelites. They murmured and they complained about what was. God does not live in what was. He's a present God. He's a right now God. Faith is now. Now faith is. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things I've not seen. Right now. He's a right now God. So if you're waiting, if, you, if you're living in the past, you're getting left behind. And so God could not use them so he took their loins and he used their loins and raised their loins up under the leadership of Joshua to bring them over into the promised land. Don't let God take your loins from you because you are disobedient. Don't allow him to take you. When I say your loins, the fruit of your loins, that your, your offspring, he took their offspring. He let them wonder because of their griping and complaining and because they were so narrow-minded and God was trying to teach them his his nature and they was they was they was so inconsistent so God took their offspring and raised them up don't let these six weeks be a waste of, a waste of time don't let this be a waste of time and you don't get new strategies and new ideas you just spinning your wheels don't let this be a waste of time for you. If you think you're going back to where you were, you have another thing coming. You will never go back to where you were. As we know it, the world has changed and it's changing. When you go back into environments, there will still be social distancing. There will be social distancing in the restaurants. We heard it on the, other, on the news the other day. The governor was giving us a... a, 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 a uh, a sneak preview of what things are going to be like moving forward. When you walk into a restaurant, sit down at the desk, at the table with your family, you will have waitress come to your table with a mask on. This is telling you how things are going to be different. When you go into the to the to, into the, the, the retail store, there are going to be six foot rules. As you notice, when you go into the into the to the to, into the retail store, the cashier have a shield that is covering them from you. Social distancing will, will be the norm for a while. So get prepared for that. It's telling you that we're not going to be the same, even churches. My God. My God. Let's go to the Word of God because I can, there's so much in me this morning. And I can't tell it all this morning, but there's so much in me. I pray that you have something to write with. And take these notes because God has been dealing with us. Thank God for all of you that have been a part of the prayer with us. Lord have been blessing our prayer throughout the week. And we will continue the prayer um, moving forward. I want to go to the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew this morning. I'm going to read out two passages of scripture this morning. 
um, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 23, and also Exodus chapter 2, verse 1. We're going to begin at verse 1. But let's, let's, let's begin reading out of the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, out of the New King James translation. Matthew, again, we welcome all of you that are streaming with us on this morning, on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 says this, But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring, she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from his sins, from their sins. Verse 22 says, So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bring a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel which is translated God with us let's move backwards into the Old Testament to the book of Exodus chapter 2 and I'm going to not read that whole chapter but we're going to skip a little bit chapter 2 Exodus chapter 2 beginning at verse 1 and then we'll skip down, we'll read verse 1, 2, and then we'll skip down to verse 5, and then we'll go from there. Out of the New, the New King James translation, it says, And a man of the house of Levi went and took as his wife the daughter of Levi. A daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a beautiful child. She hid him three months. Let's skip down to verse 5. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her head and her maidens walked along the riverside, and she saw the ark among the reeds, and she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrew children. Look at verse 7. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse for you? From the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for you. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew. And she sought him. She brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he came, became her son. So she called his name Moses. Saying, because I drew him out of the water. Because I drew him out of the water. I want to talk to you this morning about the movement. We could say the movement or a movement. But I want to talk to you about the movement this morning. We started in the book, in the Gospel of Matthew. And we know the story about the, the Virgin Mary. Uh, and giving birth to Jesus and being con the, the baby being conceived by the Holy Spirit. It was a supernatural preg pregnancy. Uh, we've never ever encountered that beyond scripture. 
It was a supernatural pregnancy. In other words, it was God, God doing, God ordained, God appointed pregnancy. No man had touched her. No man had had intercourse with her. The baby was conceived of the Holy Spirit. The baby was pure and conceived of the Holy Spirit. It was the plan and purpose of God. The Bible said that when the fullness of time came, that he sent his son into the earth. But Mary was not just pregnant with a baby. I want you to hear me clearly on this morning. I guess if you want to attach something to this title, the movement, put in parentheses, what am I pregnant with? If you're gonna if you're gonna put anything next to parentheses, put what am I pregnant with? Because you're pregnant with something, you're carrying something in your belly. The movement, the movement. So 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 the birth of Jesus was not just an ordinary birth. The birth of Jesus was a movement. It was a movement of God's fulfillment of his prophecy and bringing a kingdom down to earth. And Jesus came with an, with an agenda and an assignment to bring the kingdom of God down to earth. But he did it through the womb of a virgin woman. And he anointed that the woman of God through the Holy Spirit to bring about a movement into the earth realm. So it was, not, it was not just a pregnancy. We think about the Virgin Mary. We know the story about the baby Jesus. But she had a, a movement in her belly. She had a movement in her belly. The Bible says in verse 21 of that first chapter of Matthew. He says she shall bring forth a son. And you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. So she didn't have a baby in her stomach. In her belly, she had a movement in her belly, and I want to I want to ask you and challenge you to ask the question: What am I pregnant with this morning? What is the movement? What is the what is in my belly this morning? What is what what is God? What is God birth on the inside of me through the Holy Spirit? Just like God anointed Mary, the Virgin Mary, with the assignment of carrying Jesus, the movement of the kingdom was in her belly. Glory to God. The movement of the church and the kingdom was in the womb of Mary. I want to know what is in your womb this morning. What is in your womb this morning? Many of us are searching and we're shifting and we're trying different things. We, Many of us, to be truthful and be honest this morning, we have experimented with life. For we have not sought the Lord to know what is our earthly assignment. And I come to tell you, there's so much talk about abortion. There's so much talk about uh, taking the innocent lives of children. And I'm going to tell you why we should all be against abortion. Because you're killing seed. And when you kill seed, you kill purpose. And there's purpose that is being raised up in birth. And the enemy's job is to try to kill purpose. He tried to kill assignment. He did it with Jesus. He did it with Moses. That's why Moses was hid in the water in a basket. Because Pharaoh was out to kill all the firstborn sons. Why? Because he was trying to kill purpose. And the enemy is, he, he, he strategizes to kill purpose. I hope somebody hear me this morning. The womb of Mary's belly carried purpose. The womb of her belly carried a movement. And the enemy wanted to kill the seed of Jesus. But I remember in the, in the, in the Old Testament writing in the book of Genesis when Satan and Jesus, God had a, a conversation with Satan after the, after the fall of man. And he said there, was, there should be a seed that the woman will bring forth a seed and it will crush your head. It was, a, it was a prophetic word that was being released right then and there. And when Mary got pregnant with purpose, it was the beginning of the, of the prophecy being fulfilled. I want to let you know you got prophecy in your belly. Y'all please hear me this morning. God, I am full this morning. You have a prophetic word in your belly. 
And the, job, the enemy's job is to kill what's in your belly. He want to kill it because he don't want it to take root. He does not want it to be. He does not want you to give birth to it. The reason why he does not want you to give birth to it because he realizes that if you give birth to that thing, you're going to change the lives of people. You're going to change the lives of generations. Yes, Jesus was not only coming here to be a baby, to walk it, to be wrapped up in flesh, to take you home to heaven. Jesus came to the earth to restore what man had lost. Yes. And he had purpose. He had assignment. He had, he had kingdom in his, in his, in, in, uh, Mary had kingdom in her bosom. What are you pregnant with this morning? What is in your belly this morning? That causes you to be uncomfortable. That causes you to, to, to experience some, some labor pains. Uh, that causes you to be uh, frustrated in, at, 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 well, even where you are. You, you, you're frustrated with your job. And you're frustrated with, with, with things that are going, with, with the direction your life is going. And the, and the truth of the matter is the frustration is birthed in pain. Y'all hear me this morning. What you're feeling that's causing you to be frustrated is God's trying to birth you out. And you're fighting it. And the thing about labor pains is when they get when they get intense enough, the, that's just saying the baby is closer to coming out. And God has placed something prophetically in your belly. He has placed a prophetic assignment in your belly. Yes. Why is it prophetic? The whole Bible, as we study it, is a prophetic book. It's an ever-progressing pro book. Why? Because the Bible is a story that is unfolding. It's, 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 a, it's a book that has already been finished, and God finished the book and started from the beginning, and now we are watching it unfold. So you have purpose in your belly. As a matter of fact, you are a prophecy. You are a prophecy being fulfilled. If you think you are on this earth to, to, to die and go to heaven, you are sadly mistaken. God didn't send his son to save you to go to heaven. God sent his son to bring a kingdom and to restore mankind back to the earth. Not, to, not for you to just live breathing and say I'm going to heaven and wait for the rapture. <laughs> like many people are doing. What are you doing on the earth realm? Because in the earth realm, God said when the fullness of time came, he sent his son in the earth realm. And when Jesus came into the earth realm, he came with an assignment. You have purpose and assignment in your belly. There's a movement in your belly. Let's look at Moses. Moses had, Moses' mother had a movement in her belly. God was going to use him to lead his people out of bondage. Out of slavery. She had a movement in her belly. That's why, that's why Pharaoh could not kill him. That's why King Herod could not kill Jesus. Because they were already anointed. And everybody that's trying to take your life cannot take your life. Because you are anointed with purpose. You hear me this morning. You are anointed with an assignment. The problem is you have not figured out what that thing is yet. And until you figure out what it is, see, when you figure out what that assignment and purpose is, can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody shake you. Can't nobody, uh, can't nobody slow you down because there's purpose in your belly. Yes, Lord. And purpose ignites passion. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. There was a, there was, there was a movement in Mary's belly. And something interesting happened. When Mary was pregnant, her cousin Elizabeth was preg pregnant around the same time. And she went to spend some time with Elizabeth while she was pregnant with, the, with, 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 with John the Baptist. But they said something happened when she began to get in the presence of, 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 of Elizabeth. And they began to, she began to witness and minister to her. The Bible said that the baby... Leaped in her womb because of the fulfillment of the movement. Mm -hmm. oh my God. Movement. We see movements all around us. We saw the civil rights movement led by the late Dr. Martin Luther King and 
you think about the movement, many people will sit back and they they're they they'll flap their gums, so to speak, about Dr. King this and Dr. King that and any other movements out there. But Dr. King had a passion for something that was ignited in his belly that he could no longer have. Mother Teresa had a movement in her belly. Bill Gates had a movement in his belly. You have a movement in your belly. What are you pregnant with? The signs that birth, that 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 the labor and delivery is on the way, is when you get to a place where you're frustrated, and when you get to a place where you're agitated, and you're uncomfortable. When you when you study, when you study the the, the traits of a pregnant woman, when she gets into that ninth month, there's a great level of un. A, a, a great level of uncomfort that comes over that woman. There's a great level of uncomfort that comes in. Her body goes through a, a major change in those nine months, but that last month, the baby is soon to come. So she's experiencing pain as that baby begins to make his arrival into the world. There's some pains in your belly. I hear the Lord saying it now that you don't know what to do about. But I'm coming to tell you, you better push. Glory to God. There's some pains in your belly right now that if you don't push, that purpose will die in you. It will die in you and kill you. You got to push. I come to tell you, you have to push. The purpose that's on the inside of you out. I decree and declare this morning that God will, will ignite the passion of the purpose that he had birthed in you from birth. Jeremiah, God says, told Jeremiah, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. I made you a prophet unto the nation before you were in your mother's womb. What's in your belly was in your belly before you came into do, do the birth canal. What's in your belly is was in your belly before you came through the earth canal. Let me explain something to you. A lot of us have not experienced transformation and change in our lives because we have not gotten revelation. A lot of us have not gotten change, had the change we were looking for because we have not gotten revelation. Revelation, transformation comes at the point of revelation. When something, when the word of God is revealed to you, then transformation takes place. If the word of God is revealed to you, when the word of God is revealed, notice I said when the word of God is revealed to you, when the word of God that we're studying and that we're, that we're meditating on is revealed to you, revelation and transformation take place. No one will never, life, life will never change, their heart will never change until they have revelation of God's word. The word of God is powerful enough to change any person in condition. So revelation, at the point of revelation, transformation takes place. And let me explain something to you. When something God reveals to you, when he revealed it to you, that means it's no longer a mystery. When God revealed a, 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 reveal a word through scripture to you and give you revelation to it, in other, in other words, he give you a word that uh, give you a, a, a hidden mystery of that word is no longer a mystery. It becomes a revelation. It, it moves from mystery to revelation. The Bible said the secret thing belongs to God. Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret thing belongs to God, but the things that are revealed belong to us. So when things are revealed to us, then people, then people can no longer say, I didn't know. Because now it's no longer a mystery, it becomes revelation. Amen. So revelation is nothing that was nothing but a mystery. Something that was mysterious in the realm of God, but now it's revealed to us. And the only way revelation comes. 
is that we spend time with God in prayer and we get in the presence of God, seeking God's face, and God will begin to reveal to us strategy through his word. Yes. So transformation takes place at the point of revelation. Hashtag that. Post that. Revelation takes, uh, transformation takes place at the point of revelation. So a person, in other words, what are you saying? In other words, a person can read the Bible to their black and blue in the face. A person can read the Bible and study the Bible and retain scripture. Because our mental capacity will allow us to retain what we study and what we read. But even in, re in, our, even in our retaining of scripture and retaining of the word of God, that does not bring revelation. Revelation takes place when God's word hits your heart. And when it hits your heart and change your heart, that's revelation. Because you no longer see what you saw. Revelation brings about I, something that, that, that I didn't see before is being revealed. That's what revelation is. Something that I didn't see before is, is being revealed. And the problem with many people are they're closed-minded to the things of God. And they put a cap and a limit on God. And I come to tell you, your brilliant thinking and your finite thinking and your e intelligent mind that you have could never grasp the things of God because the word of God is exhausting. You can't exhaust the word of God. You can never run out of things of God because God's word is packed with revelation. And the only way you can get revelation out of God is to spend time with God and ask God, what are you saying to me in this season? And what God said to you last season is not what he's going to say to you this season. But what he said to you this season is not what he's going to say to you next season. So why? So that's why you have to continue to keep an open mind because every season you're going to get different instructions. Every season you're going to get a different strategy. And in, and in order to know what God wants you to do, you must be in tune and in line with God. Yes. And there was a tribe that was known as a tribe of Issachar. That's I-S-S-A-C-H-A-R. Issachar, they were one of the tribes, one of the 12 tribes. They had a special anointing upon them. And it's my prayer that this anointing will rest upon the church and the people of God, the kingdom of God today. They had a special anointing on them. The anointing that they had was very unique. The anointing that they had was very unique. When someone, something or someone is anointed, they have a supernatural power that, and a supernatural grace to penetrate an area that you could never do in the natural. That's what an anointing does. We got people that's preaching and teaching, but they ain't anointed. We got people that's, that's pastoring churches, but they're not anointed. They, we, we got people that's prophesying, but they're not anointed. See, 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 when you're anointed, you have a supernatural grace upon your life. A supernatural power on you that will and that will that will give you the uh, the power to penetrate in areas that man could never touch yes. because of an anointing is upon your life. So the sons of Is Issachar had an anointing on them. They had a unique anointing on him. Their anointing was they it enabled them to understand the times and the seasons that they were in. In other words, they were able to prepare the people for what was to come. They were prepared the people for what was ahead. That was the anointing that was on their life. So you mean to tell me that we live in this life and we can know what's going ahead, what's, what's going on ahead of us? Yes, we can, but we must get in a place with God. This, this thing about things walk, walking up on us and surprise us, that's a lie. Because the Bible says that God is doing a new thing, and before he do the new thing, he tell you about it. So that's what the scripture says in Isaiah 43 and 42. If you read Isaiah chapter 42 and 43, it tells you that God said, Behold, I do a new thing, and I tell you before it even happened. So you can't never say that God never warns us to protect and tell us what the Bible said, warning come before destruction. Mm -hmm. So if the, the sons of Issachar, the anointing of Issachar was needed in that season, and it's needed in this season. Why? So we can discern the, the times and the season, when we should move, when we should go, when we should stop, when we should stay. We should know when we're supposed to do whatever we're supposed to do because that anointing should rest on us. And I decree and declare that the sons of Issachar anointing will rest upon us. Yes. It will rest upon you as an individual. It will rest upon the church that we're in. It will rest upon the church as we know it. That people will know to be able to discern the times and the season 
that God is saying to us in this in this in this particular season, so we can know when to move, when not to move, when to speak, and when not to speak. A lot of us are speaking out of turn. A lot of us are doing things that God did not anoint us to do. We're doing things that God did not tell us to do because we are operating outside of the anointing. And many of you are in places that God never anointed you to be in, and that's the first mistake because you're somewhere that God did not ordain or anoint you to be in. So therefore, you wonder why the chaos is there. You wonder why there's no connection. You wonder why there's so much mishap. Uh -huh. It's because you are placed somewhere where you were never assigned to go. Mm -hmm. And you're placed somewhere that you've never been anointed to go. I hope somebody's hearing me this morning. Uh -huh. But when God anoints you, when God anoints you and purpose you in your belly to do something, when you touch whatever you touch in that season, will prosper. Because God has anointed you and graced you for that season. Some of you are somewhere that you are not supposed to be. And until you move where you're supposed to be, you will never have success where you are. Thank you, Jesus. So I speak the Issachar anointing, the Issachar anointing upon your life. Upon the church. That we will understand the times and the season. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Lord, help me yes, today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help me today. So, so Mary was pregnant with purpose. She was pregnant with an assignment. She was pregnant with an assignment. I want to I wanna go again to, back to the scriptures. I want to read something to you that God placed in my spirit. Glory to God. I pray this is blessing you this morning. I pray this is blessing you this morning. I want you to go with me to the book of, go back to the book of Matthew, the gospel of Matthew. Let's go to the 17th chapter. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. We're going to begin reading at verse 2. Verse 2. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 17. Verse 2. Well, let's back up to verse 1. Read out a new King James translation. It says, now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John, his brother, led them up to the high, a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone, shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Now pay attention closely. And behold, we read verse 3 again. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let us make here, three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Verse 5 says, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Glory to God. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were greatly afraid. But Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and do not be afraid. When they, lay, when, when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. They saw no one but Jesus only. It was interesting to me when I began to read this passage of scripture some time ago, and then I talked about earlier about revelation, what I believe God revealed to me through this scripture was that trans configuration, that transfiguration on the mountain that took place. That was a supernatural encounter that the disciples were able to be a part of with, the, with their teacher. But they saw Moses. They saw Elijah, and there was Jesus. So there was Moses, Elijah, Jesus, Peter, James, and John on the mountain. The only three, the inner circle of Jesus, were on the mountain. The other nine was left behind. The only three that was in there was the inner circle of Jesus.
Peter, James, and John. So it was six people from what we gather in scripture that was on the mountain. Elijah. They saw Elijah. They saw in the, in the spirit, they saw Elijah. They saw Moses. And there was Jesus. And then they saw, and then there was Peter, James, and John. Peter was. Peter was acting in the flesh when he said, Master, let us build three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But the Bible says this. That the word of the Lord came from the clouds, said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Hear him. Hear him. So God showed this to me and gave this revelation to me. Moses represent the Mosaic law. Elijah represents the prophets. Elijah was the prophet. Moses was wrote the Torah and the Pentateuch. He, he wrote the law. The Mosaic law. So there was an error for the Mosaic law. That era had ended. And the prophets represented the prophecy that were fulfilled. Hear me good this morning. The Moses, Moses era had ended. The, the era of the law had ended. Then you look at Elijah. Elijah was the prophet. It signified the prophetic word that was released of Jesus coming. And then Jesus, the fulfillment of the prophecy. Those three. And at the end, when the disciples raised their face, raised their eyes, and looked up, nobody was standing but Jesus. And what it was signifying was that Jesus, the message that Jesus was preaching, was the message that they were supposed to hear. The message of the kingdom. It's what they were supposed to hear. He was saying the era of Moses is gone. Elijah prophesied. The pro Elijah's, Elijah represented the prophecies, the prophets that prophesied of Jesus coming. The prophecy had come to pass. Now here's my son. Hear him. This is what God was saying. There are some seasons that are over. Why am I saying that? There are some seasons that we would never go back to. There are some transfigurations that are taking place now. The era of the church is never going to be the era of the church as you know it. Get that out of your mind and get it out of your thinking. The era of the church will never be the era that the church once were. There were so many different movements in the church. We saw the Pentecostal movement that took place years ago. There was a Pentecostal movement. Then there was a word of faith movement. Then there was a uh, uh, the uh, the apostolic and the and the uh, the apostolic and the prophetic movement. There were so many movements that it, we can't even name. And the movement was just a, a series of events that was to take place. There was there was a there was a there was an agenda that 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 was to take place in that particular time that period. And I come to tell you, if you live in a, in the ancient period, you are already dead. Because as the world turns, it changes. The church has always been behind of the change. It's never been prepared for the change. Because the world was so, the church was so busy criticizing what's going on in the world. And the world is, get, is taking the principles of the kingdom and they, and they apply it in the secular world. And we don't even know what the principles are. They're learning the kingdom principles. And they're doing it, using them in the secular world. And we in the church don't know the kingdom principle. And the Bible tells us clearly that it is our Father's good pleasure to give us the key to the kingdom. He will give you strategies. How, listen, let me share this with you. I have to leave this with you. All of us, as we sit here this morning and listen to this broadcast, you are a citizen of the United States. You and I are citizens of the United States. I don't doubt that and you don't doubt that. So being a citizen of the United States, me, it says you have rights in the United States. 
There's some rights that you have. But you know the sad thing about it? Many of us have been living in the United States all our life and we don't know all our rights. So if you don't know all your rights, you don't know what you're entitled to. When you don't know all your rights, you don't know what you're entitled to. Well, so it is in the kingdom of God. Many of us are citizens of the kingdom of God and we are blind to the rights and we are ignorant to the rights that we have in the kingdom. And that's why we're where we are. That's why uh, uh, we don't understand kingdom economics. We don't, under we don't understand kingdom health. We don't understand kingdom wealth. We don't understand any of those things because we never ask God for the strategy. I'm telling you, we are in the, in, in the season where the kingdom of God is rising up. And the church will no longer be the way the church used to be. That's why you have to get out of your mind what the church is and what the church looks like. Because you are the church. You take the church where you wherever you go. You take the sanctuary in your office. You take the sanctuary into the mall. You take the sanctuary wherever you go. Why? Because you are the church. The church is nothing but the people that's called out. And what you see now will never be again. A new era. My God. Thank you, Jesus. My God. What are you pregnant with? There's a movement in you. Some of you are called to some things and the devil have put fear in you. The devil has put fear in you and told you that you, I don't want to leave my loved ones. I don't want to leave my loved ones. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And he put a fear in you. And fear will rob you of destiny. Fear will rob you of destiny. Faith will propel you into destiny. Fear will rob you of destiny. God is waiting to, to use you in ways that you never thought he could use you, but you're afraid. You're afraid to leave the nest. You're afraid to try something that God has told you he's going to be with you with because you're trying to analyze it. When God assigned you and anoint you, he didn't ask you to become, a, become analytical. An analyst of what of the, what he's giving you. He asks you to say yes to it and obey what he's telling you to do. And he'll bless you. He never asks you to analyze how he's gonna do it. And the times we waste analyzing it is time we can be using to make up ground. Mm -hmm. I rebuke that spirit over you this morning. That fear, that fearful spirit. It's not until you get out of your out of your comfort zone. And, 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 and pay attention to those signs that, that, that I feel uncomfortable, but I believe God is with me. Step out. God is trying to push you out. But as he push you out, he's holding your coattail so you won't fall. He's not pushing you out for you just to go. He's pushing you out to hold your coattail. You know, I heard, I heard uh, Steve Harvey say something. A while back, about uh, you know Steve Harvey is very motivational, and he was given uh, given some uh, motivational uh, doing a motivational talk, and he was talking about taking risk, taking risk. You know, you if you don't jump, he used an analogy of a parachute and jumping off a cliff, and he said. If you got a parachute on your back and you jump off the cliff, you have to have faith that that parachute is going to open up and it's going to help you land safely. That that parachute is going to open up and land safely and help you land safely. God is greater than any parachute. If God told you to do something and you know that it's in your belly, then you are obligated to do it. Amen. Hear what I'm saying this morning. If it's in your belly, you are obligated to do it. There's never been a baby in a woman's belly that disappeared. The baby had to be birthed. Y'all hear me this morning. If something is in your belly, it got to be delivered. And even if that baby died in that mother's stomach, womb, she still had to get it out. If it's in your belly, it's not to stay there. 
What's in your belly this morning? What is God speaking to you in these six weeks? I want to pray for you this morning. The movement. The movement. There's a movement in you. God is birthing some of you to be the leader of your generation, to bring your generation, uh, your, your generation, your family lineage out of bondage, out of poverty. God has birthed some of you. He had put something in your spirit to bring your people, your brothers and sisters out of bondage. And you're sitting on what is in your belly because you're afraid. But I break the spirit of fear off of you in the name of Jesus. That you be released from it right now. Yes. And that you go forward in what God has called you. I don't know who this message is for this morning. But you, God has ordained you and anointed you to be the catalyst in your family. You wonder why they keep coming to you. You wonder why they keep consulting you about things. And God is using you to bring them out. Yes. If everybody is in bondage, then nobody can deliver somebody. Somebody got to get out to go back and get them. And when he got out, Moses got out. He stayed gone for a while, but he went back and he got his people. What are you being birthed for? What are you being birthed for? Mother Teresa walked over homeless people laying on the streets. A teacher with very little income walked over people laying on the street corner, on the streets in poverty, hungry. And she took her little, the little, little that she had, and she began to provide food for them. She had a movement in her belly. And today, she's dead and gone and known all over the world for what she did. Dr. Martin Luther King got tired of seeing injustice among ethnicity groups. And there was something in his belly that ignited him. And today, there's a holiday that's set aside to remember his what he done. Yes. A movement. What is in your belly? Business owner, what's in your belly? What are you going to take into the marketplace of the kingdom? The kingdom got to go beyond the four walls. Hear me this morning. I, I know I have to end this, but I'm stirred in my spirit. The kingdom must go beyond the four walls. The kingdom got to advance. It can't stay in the four walls. Everything, well, it, you know, we got to do it in the church. No, the kingdom needs to be in the marketplace. Why? Because we need prophets in the White House. We need prophets over in the governor's mansion. Yes. Why? Yes, we need a prophet with the anointing of Issachar so he can tell the government what you should do during this pandemic. We need prophets to go to the Oval Office and tell President Trump what we should do during this time. You need office. We, we need people that will rise up and take their rightful place. And because you don't know the kingdom rights, you allow man to dictate your life. And you were never, and the reason why you're frustrated is because you were never designed for nobody to rule you. The way you were designed was to take dominion over what was given to you. And you don't know how to do it, so you're frustrated and you blame man for it. But you're not no longer ignorant today. Because what you what you now know, you're no longer ignorant to. Now, whether you do it or not is on you. But what you know now is revelation, and you're no longer ignorant to it, so you have no excuse. You only you you can be excused for what you don't know. But once you know it, it's no longer an excuse. You can't no longer use an excuse for it because you knew. If you touch a hot stove, you didn't know it was hot. That's one time. The next time, if you touch it, it's going to burn you again because you, 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 you've you been warned that it's hot. What's in your belly? 
There's a movement. There's a movement. Mary had a movement in her belly. Glory to God. Just right where you are, I just want you to close your eyes. And I want to pray for you. Father, I thank you this morning that you are the giver of seed. Yes. And all seed has a purpose. Glory to God. I feel you anointed. Every seed has purpose. The apple seed bring forth apples. The mango seed bring forth mangoes. Every seed has a purpose. And every seed every seed bring forth purpose and I pray this morning for the seed that is in the belly of every person that is watching this morning there's some people that have not obeyed and you've been calling and you've been talking and you've been telling and you've been giving dreams you've been giving visions and they're not complying with you God this morning I pray that fear in the name of Jesus, be broken off of them. And that their faith will rise. That they will no longer be fearful. And not allow man to dictate to them what they can and can't do. Not allow emotional attachments to keep them bound. But God, break the limits off of them. And let them know that you are God. And if you anointed them, you will be with them. If you anointed them and appointed them, you will be with them. There's never a time you will leave them. I pray this morning that they should never worry about the resources. They should not worry about the people. They should not worry about the building. They should not worry about anything that you told them you would do. All we need to do is remember that your word says all the promises of God are yes and amen. And I pray this morning that what's in their belly, it began to leap. Glory to God. Just like the baby leaped. Hallelujah. In Elizabeth's womb. The baby leaped. Yes. Leaped at that baby. I pray the baby in our bellies leap. Ignite the passion that we may give birth to the thing you've called us to. Yes, Lord. Not knowing how it's going to turn out, but believing you every step of the way. Thank you, Jesus. We break the spirit of fear off of every individual. For you have not given us a spirit of fear. Yes. But power, love, and a sound mind. Thank I pray this over your people today. I pray also, Father, while we're praying, for every person that is under the sound of my voice that does not have a relationship with you. Yes, Lord. They do not know your son Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. Therefore, they can never enter into the kingdom of God. But Jesus told Nicodemus, the only way you can enter into the kingdom of God, you must be born again. And I pray this morning that somebody that is watching, that have never accepted you as their Lord and Savior, that this would be the moment, yes. this day, the 26th day of the fourth month, yes. of the year of our Lord, 2020. Yes. They will say, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I opened my heart to him. Therefore, now I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. And I have the rights and privileges to everything that my father has yes. for me. It is my prayer that that individual life will never be the same. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Today is Vision Sunday. Today is Vision Sunday. We thank God for all of you this morning. I pray that the word has blessed you. It blessed me as I've been studying and putting it together. There's greatness in you. There's a, there's, a, there's a movement. There's a seed of greatness on the inside of you. There is, this is our Vision Sunday. For those of you that are tuning in with us, we do Vision Sunday at GGM every fourth Sunday, uh, which gives um, the members an opportunity to sow seed into the ministry for vision. Amen. To sow seed for vision. And those of you that are visiting with us online this morning, if you desire to be a part of sowing and to that vision fund, uh, God has given us a great vision uh, in the in the uh, in the kingdom. 
at this at this time, and I just believe that God is going to do some great things. I would love to see uh, a kingdom school here in our area. Uh, there's a lot of things that I want to see. Some 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 uh, some some things that we want to be able to help people be empowered to be able to reach their goals and and and, and be able to, to find out what they're destined for in this earth in the earth realm. And that is our prayer. And it takes it takes funds. The Bible says that money answers all purposes. Um, it takes funds. It takes funds to run your household. You have to have income in your household to pay your your mortgage and to pay your light bill and, and, and everything else. So it takes resources. We don't beg at GGM. We believe. We don't beg. We believe that God will meet our every need because he's anointed and ordained this time. And there's never a time God anointed and ordained, ordained something that he don't provide for. So we don't have to beg. So when provision is there, you don't have to beg. People that beg is because they don't believe. There's no unbelief in the vision God has given us. So that's why we're sowing. Yes. So I'm praying today that you, that desire to sow with us, we're not telling you what to give and how to give. I never tell GGM what to give. But I always encourage them to give their best. Why? Because God deserves our best. And what you're giving is going into the kingdom. It's not going, coming to me. It's going into the kingdom to do what God says to do. Amen? To do what God says to do. And it's my prayer that you sow with us on this morning, whatever God put in your heart. And I want to tell you this. My beautiful wife and I, God has placed us as leaders over this ministry. And we We'll never ask someone to do what we're not doing. So I want you to know, we tie, we sow seed, we give, we give, and we give. We never, we never broadcast what we give, we just give. And because of it, God is blessing us, and he's doing the same thing for you. Amen. I want to go to our declaration. Amen. I want to go to our declaration. Uh, those of you that will be giving on Give the Five, we, we have our three ways of giving. Uh, I want to give you some special instructions this morning. We have um, the three ways of giving. It should be on your screen. Those of you that's on Facebook is on your screen. Um, Giveify. Go to the Giveify app. Follow the prompt and find GGM. Follow the prompt as you can give that way. If you're giving on Giveify, there is an envelope that when you click to give your amount, there's an envelope that has been created says Vision Sunday. <clears throat> Put your gift in that envelope. And that will let us know that um, the money is going for Vision Sunday. All right? And, of course, if you're giving tithes, you can give your tithes to the tithe envelope. So that's for Giveify only. If, you, if you're giving via Cash App, you can go to Cash App, dollar sign, glory, gather, 19. And when you put a memo, just put in the memo, Vision Sunday for GGM. All right? Whatever God placed on your heart to give. And those of you that want to mail in your gift, you may do so as well. You can go to P.O. Box, mail it to P.O. Box, uh, 11975, Alexandria, Louisiana. Zip code is 71315. All right? So if you want to mail your gift in, you can do that as well. All right? I want to read to you the declaration before we pray and let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. It says, Declaration over my finances. According to the word of God, I declare that money coming to the body of Christ and money coming to me for the sake of the gospel. I call my church debt free. I call in the necessary finances to completely pay off all the buildings, properties, and equipment and to do everything God has called us to do in the church, to do as a church. We will help reach the lost and the hurting Help the believers walk in faith and victory by the preaching of the gospel. I call myself debt free. I proclaim that I have the necessary finances to do everything that God has called me to do and have enough in store to bless others. Father, I honor you by putting you first in my finances, by giving my best in tithes and offerings. You are bringing me into a wealthy place. Come on, receive the word this morning. 
I call my house and all my property paid in full. Yes, God. I believe I will receive raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, yes. discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and good surprises, lost money found, bills decreased and paid off, blessings and increase. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs so, I, so that I may have more than enough to give into your kingdom. Money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. Amen. I speak a blessing over your finances today. Father, as we prepare to put a seed in the ground, the Bible declares that as long as the earth remains, there shall be seed time and harvest. And I believe your word this morning that there's never a time you place, we place a seed in the ground and it does not come back a harvest. I pray, God, that you would bless every person that is generously giving this morning. That they're giving into the kingdom of God. They're not giving to me. They're not giving to my wife. But they're giving to the kingdom of God this morning. And I pray your blessings upon the hand that gives. Anoint them, God, and bless them continuously as you have shown yourself mighty through this pandemic. They have not gone without food. They have not gone without, uh, without shelter. They have not gone without water. They have not gone without electricity and clothing. Because you promised you would give us all of those things and more. I believe this morning, God, that they are sowing in the most fertile ground that there is, the kingdom of God. And they will ever get a return for the seed that they sow. Bless every giver today. We're not about the amount that they're giving. The woman gave the might. She gave a might in the Bible. And she gave the greatest gift. No matter what the gift is they give this morning. It's not about the size. Yes, but the heart that is attached to it. We give cheerfully this morning. Hallelujah. We yes. pray your blessings upon. And the declaration that we read and made over the people this morning. It is so. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Let me say this to you before we go. Thank you for your generosity and your giving. And those of you that are partnering with us, I want you to know we appreciate you. We love you. Many of you are partnering with us. And you have been supportive of this ministry while we been on uh, been uh, on the air, been on the internet. You've been blessing us and being a, a blessing to us. And we appreciate what you're doing. And it's not going unnoticed. So I want you to know from uh, Pastor Tony and Lady T that we love you so much and that we appreciate what you're doing. And GG, the GGM family appreciate what you're doing, those of you that are partnering with us. And those of you that want to partner with us, please email me, uh, inbox me on Facebook. Let me know you want to partner with our ministry and you can make a monthly con contribution to our ministry if you want to do that as well. Um, there's no pressure on you. I'm just giving you the opportunity if you want to do that. Um, but I want to say this to you. When you sow seed, if God tell you to sow seed, if no one else sow seed around you, and God told you tell you to sow seed, then you sow seed at the point of revelation. When God give you a revelation that you need to sow right here, reveal to you this is the way you need to sow, that's where you sow. I want to leave this with you. There's a young lady that God has placed in our ministry. She's, she's a, a remote member. She, she, she's not able to attend service with us every Sunday. Um, but she she's uh, but God spoke to her heart to sow into our ministry. And when she sowed into our ministry, what she what God is doing in her life is unbelievable. She's a college student and got a, and received a job before she even graduated. That's that's really unheard of in a lot of places. Not only received a job, she received her pay. She's getting paid before she even graduated. So don't tell me when God tell you to do something you, and you do it, he don't bless you. She obeyed him at the point of revelation to sow in GGM. And because she sowed in GGM, God began to open the floodgates for her. 
So please obey God. Whatever God tells you to sow, put it in the ground and trust him and watch what God does. This Pastor Tony said, I love you. I want to remind you, tomorrow we will be in prayer. Information is on your screen. Those of you that are on Facebook, um, prayer, the prayer will be going forth in the morning at 6 a.m. The Lord has been blessing us and meeting us in prayer. Please make a sacrifice to join the prayer. Even if you can't join every day, make a sacrifice to join the prayer. God will bless you. I guarantee he will bless you. You're pregnant with something. You got a movement in you. This Pastor Tony saying he love you. Live full. Live free. Live life more abundantly. Enjoy your Sunday evening. Yeah.